recently I was looking around my bookshelves and I found the very first chemistry book that I had at school. It wasn't new. I got it after some other pupil and it says copy the table on page 128. I don't know who wrote that. And it's full of really nice chemistry and all sorts of inorganic chemistry reactions. But the one thing that really struck me about this book is that it doesn't have a periodic table. And I find that extraordinary. Mendeleev invented the periodic table in 1869. That's nearly a hundred years before this book was published. It was published in 1961, especially to teach inorganic chemistry. But I was quite lucky, I also had my own periodic table, and here I also found my very first periodic table. Here it is. You can see that the elements go up to number 101. So even when I was a schoolboy, it had got to quite far in the periodic table. And I actually had two versions of this. I had this one here, which was black, which I had next to my bed. And a much bigger one, sort of full size, like in a classroom, which was blue, which I had <coughs> on the opposite wall of my room. So you had two periodic tables? I had two periodic tables in my bedroom. And we know that quite a lot of viewers have periodic tables in their bedroom, or even on their shower curtains. So we'd really like to see some pictures of yours, so you can see how it compares with mine. But what is quite interesting, if you're into the periodic table, is that the groups used to be named 1A, 2A, up to 8. And 8 was a big group across here. And then they went 1B, 2B, 3B, and so on, up to 7B. And the rare gases were not, or noble gases, didn't have a number. And helium, sort of, in this particular one, floated over here, not attached to anything else except hydrogen. This numbering system was dreadful for school children because teachers had this way of saying, well, let's get the guys to write an essay and we'll ask them to compare the chemistry of manganese here in group 7A with the chemistry of chlorine, which is in group 7B. Manganese is a metal, I hope you know, if you look at our videos, and chlorine is a gas. And there really isn't very much in common at all. So I think a lot of people were put off chemistry by such silly questions. Nowadays, the groups are numbered from 1 to 18, and teachers really don't now ask questions, compare groups 7 and 17, because it sounds silly, and it was silly then. What do you think, seeing your first periodic table, does it bring back much nostalgia or do you feel quite detached from it? I think it's really quite nice. It's, I suppose, well, it's an old friend. I used to look at it a lot. But also, it's quite like seeing a young person who's now grown up because this is the young periodic table and nowadays it's grown more. I wouldn't like to say fatter, but it's grown more because it's got lots more elements. And I think that when I was young, I didn't imagine that there would be many more elements in the periodic table. And to be quite honest, when we started these periodic videos, I wasn't expecting that many more elements would be discovered and named. And we've already had three new elements named since we started the videos, and I think there are going to be some more names soon. So it's really an exciting time to be studying chemistry and looking at the periodic table. I'm not quite sure where it came from. Uh, my parents got it for me. It was sponsored by the International Nickel Company. They didn't have websites in those days, but they had some address that you could send off for them. I seem to remember that the periodic table arrived in a big cardboard tube. It was really exciting. And I think this was just inside, rolled up as a sort of extra freebie. And you can see here is the remains of the sticky tape that was used to stick it onto the wall of my bedroom. 
I guess that when I took it off, some of the wallpaper also came off too, but that's disappeared now. Well, I've got one more question. What was the table on page 128? Um, it's a bit boring, I think. Well, perhaps not. It has a whole series of elements from potassium to gold and all sorts of different reactions, how they react with water. Potassium, as you know, goes with a good bang. Even Neil runs away from it, whereas gold doesn't react at all. You can wash your hands wearing a wedding ring, and so on. But imagine making the poor pupils copy out things like that. Chemistry is not about learning things by heart. It's about understanding things. Though you do have to remember some facts, 